Uh, I want to talk about the new rule changes here in baseball, um, especially the sticky stuff. You've seen guys pretty much getting caught for having rosin on their hand, a little too much rosin. Can we go back to when I played with you for the three years? You would go back into your little corner after each inning and the concoction you had there in front of you. Um, how many games would you think you'd be getting for this concoction you had down? Oh man, that science project I had going, they might've kicked <laughs> me out of the game for good. They would have me right next to Pete Rose. <laughs> exactly. You know, where, where that whole thing started, I've been saying forever, the league just needs to take the baseballs and rub them up with the mud and then add a little bit of pine tar and a little tack to them. And now they're finally coming around to finding a pre-tacked baseball. And, you know, People don't realize how hard it is and how different it is. The baseball at the big league level is different than in the minor league level. And in the minor league level, they use the ball over and over and over again. At the big league level, as soon as it touches the ground, they throw it out. So you're constantly getting a baseball thrown to you from the umpire that has kind of a, a powdery substance on the outside of it, which is the mud they rub balls up with. But when it dries, it turns almost like baby powder. You take that to a, a young rookie who's then maybe pitching in September or October you know, in Yankee Stadium, and the wind's whipping and there's no humidity, it feels like you're throwing a cue ball off a pool table with baby powder on it. There is no way to command that pitch. And so for me, early on in my career, I figured out that if I could just get a little pine tar on the ball and just rub it around and make it tacky and fix the ball, then I wouldn't have to deal with it so much. And so, you know, without having some sort of a grip on the ball, there's no way to be effective, especially for a guy like me who was throwing – you know, 87 to 89 on a good day, I'm touching 90. I needed to be able to spin the ball for strikes. And so, you know, you just had to find ways to do it. And, and I would sit down in that little corner and I had this, this, uh, I had this concoction, which was, I would clean my hand from all that black stuff off the ball. I would clean my hand with, with, uh, without rubbing alcohol and then put a little rosin on it. And then I would just take pine tar and put it on my left hand and my glove. And I would just tap the ball and, ru and just rub it and get a little stickiness on it. And it wasn't allowing me to do anything I shouldn't be able to do it was just basically fixing the ball in a way. And, um, you know, they've been, they've been opposed to that for such a long time in baseball, but I think they're going to finally get to it because it's just a waste of time to have guys out there who have all kinds of weird stuff on their neck and all over the place trying to figure out how to get a grip on a baseball that you should have a grip on anyway. Yeah, but you forgot the couple other things. You had your fruit there too as well. You had your banana. I think you had an apple. Wasn't there some kind of food there too as well? Yeah, I'd have some. I'd usually have a banana. I'd have some applesauce. Uh, a lot of the stuff I picked up in Boston. Uh, I also had a. I had a, like a caffeine drink that was this lime green, and and it was this red drink that was a hydration drink. And both of those came from a company that Kurt Schilling um, actually introduced the Red Sox to. A, a lot of a lot of that year in 2004, I'd have my friends say, "What is that red drink you guys are always drinking in the dugout?" And they they would actually mix that drink for the whole dugout in each water bottle for the Red Sox, and it was like a hydration drink. But uh, yeah, I had this whole thing going on. And part of part of being off the bench also started back in 2004. And what it was is I realized that down in the tunnel, first of all, the cameras weren't on you, right? And so you could kind of relax a little bit more, not feel like you had eyes on you. And the other thing was it was it was really hot outside. It was cooler in the in the tunnel. And if it was really cold outside, it was warmer in the tunnel. And so it was a way for me to relax, kind of get away from the game. You know, the way that I thought about pitching was not about striking guys out and being out there for five innings. It was about can I, can I make it through the seventh? You know, I was trying to get deep in ball games and pitch 200 innings year after year. And in order to do that with a guy who was only throwing in the high eighties, I felt like I had to pick up every little crumb. And part of that was to be down there and have that food and have that ability to kind of relax away from the cameras. Yeah, that's wild. I mean, you know, Scherzer's dealt with stuff like that with the sticky stuff earlier in the season. He's like, I swear on my kids that, all I'm using is, is sweat and rosin. So it's been talked about a lot on our shows throughout this time.